This is Syria, a cluster mess for quite a while. How did this happen? Well it kinda started with Syria being located in the Fertile Crescent. The top prize of many civilizations. Including Sumerians, Ablates, Akkadians, Amorites, Hurrian Mitanni, Hittites, Assyrians, Egyptians, Assyrians again, Babylonians, Persians, this Macedonian dude, Hellenistic dudes, Armenians, Romans, this lady in Pomeria, Romans again, Byzantines, and Arabs Muslims. Syria prospered as the center of the Umayyad dynasty. Then, Seljuk Turks, Crusaders, Mongols, Mamluks, Timurids, and the Ottomans. Syria being at the crossroad between Europe, Asia, and Africa, was a thriving melting pot, encompassing Arabs, Kurds, Turkmen, Assyrians, Circassians, Armenians, and many more. These people love Sunni Islam, Shia Islam, Alwites, Druze, Christianity, and God knows what else. The people in Syria speak Arabic, Kurdish, Turkish, Aramaic, Circassian, Chechen, Armenian, Greek, and many more. As the Ottomans decline, the Brits and French carved out the Middle East by drawing a random straight line, probably drunk. The French got Syria, after some resistance from this Hashemite dude. The French divided Syria into six bits, one of them later got away. A bunch of revolts later, the Syrian Republic was formed, still bossed around by France. France separated Hatay from Syria and gave it to Turkey, to encourage Turkey to reject an alliance with Nazi Germany. After World War II, Syria became properly independent. So how do you unite a country filled with different languages, ethnicities, and religions? The oldest trick in the book is to fight a war, a war which Syria did not win. Arab nationalism became super cool, so Egypt and Syria became united, for a while. Various coups later, Alawit Baath took over the Sunni majority Syria, and Syria continued its beef with Israel. Syria also intervened in Lebanon, until the Lebanese got fed up. It was all fun and games for the Assad family in Syria until the Arab Spring. To grossly simplify, the Syrian civil war was basically a time bomb explosion of the underlying tensions. Which include the Al-Assad family being dictators, the non alawite majority not happy with the Alawite dominant minority, some pipeline dramas between United States and Russia, some people wanting to be super duper holy, and some persistent separatist movements. As the civil war went on, it became a proxy war between international players, testing out their latest toys. The victims were of course the Syrians themselves, who fled the country in droves. Long story short, the Syrian Alawite Assad government backed by Russia and Iran have been somewhat successful in uniting most of Syria, a geopolitical checkmate against the Americans who were supporting the opposition. It is always easier to support a single Syrian dude aimed at national unity, compared to supporting a bunch of disunited armed militants with different opposing aims. So what do Russia and Iran want in return? Well, mainly military bases, and remaining a close ally, at Syria's cost of being on America's naughty list. In the chaos, Turkey got bits of northern Syria, whilst Israel continued to occupy Golan Heights. The story of Syria is a classic example of a country created in a strategic crossroad by big bullies in the past, and the local people bearing the consequences ever since. Thus, the emergence of strong dictators who are determined to unite their inherently fragmented country is of no surprise. So why does a multicultural strategically located ex-colony like Singapore can become successful whilst Syria has fallen into shambles? Well, although Singapore and Syria both have strong repressive dictators, Singapore used English language, love of money, and the fear of losing to unite its people, whereas Syria used a minority group to dominate the rest. The lesson here is, if you need to rule a multicultural country, do your best to find a common ground amongst the people, or else the people will tear the country apart.
So is there still a future for Syria? What can unite all Syrians? Mediterranean Levantine identity can be one, but deep down being a Syrian actually means being crazy about olive oil, this Aleppo soap, this Damascus steel, and can never understand the dialect from Aleppo. Today, Syria is still in deep crap, but maybe China can spice things up a bit. Syria has a lot to offer to the world, including good places to visit, good food, very ancient stuff, and Syrians migrants who are literally everywhere, good luck using them wisely. Thanks for watching.